it's interesting because it's a yet not habitable space. So it's a fantastic place to put your dreams. And I think that within our dreams and our ability to dream, we also carry our sense of criticism. And I think it's a fantastic sort of space in our minds. I think it's beautiful. I think in the most the technology doesn't really offer this kind of space for people. Every year we have research projects presented by artists. The first was Olaf Reliason a few years ago. And this year we were discussing with him who could it be. Of course, we thought about Ai Weiwei. The first thing was like connecting by web because he's, he's not allowed to leave uh, Beijing, as we know. My condition, I cannot travel. I still, I still don't have my passport today. So the only way we can collaborate is through Skype or telephone. Marcello calls me up this one day and he wanted to know if I was interested in working and collaborating with them to really come up with the solution for this impossible mission. Obviously there's a huge time difference between New York, China and Berlin. So it mainly happened through a couple of ways. From phone calls to emails to even Olaf were recording a video on his iPhone and sending it to us as a response. To collaborate is always about sharing an idea. Interestingly, we could still share the idea and also our knowledge, our dreams, they travel anyway. I work with recreating natural phenomena. And in that idea, I have different questions, you know, critical questions, poetic questions. You could say that Ai Weiwei works with recreating cultural phenomena. They have a kind of thing in common, and that is questioning reality. Who produces reality? What is reality? Is reality relative? Oliver and I we came out with an idea to do a digital project together, a work of art online. It's a website where people can log in and create a mark, which is a very simple drawing, black and white, and they can post it and it appears on a sphere that is shared among all the visitors to the site. Then you can browse around and pan and zoom in and zoom out and really examine the marks and click a mark and see who made that mark, and when they made it. You can also tag your marks with different tags like air and war and passion. We were immediately attracted to drawing because the concept of an endless canvas and a shared canvas is something special and unique. The moon is about nurturing, celebrating, facilitating and sharing the marks that are being suppressed, excluded, or just not really taken care of. When we were at Olafur's studio, Olafur spoke to Ai Weiwei and asked him, what do you think a mark should be? And Ai Weiwei said, it should be the last words of a dying man, like the most significant thing you could possibly say. When they launched the moon, first a few hours, Chinese people become very excited. And then immediately, within 24 hours, has been blocked by uh, Chinese authority. So you see how an individual mark or individual mind can be seen as so powerful or threatened to society. The way that we are being treated by society in general, I think it's very important to insist on, well, even a tiny, tiny mark is fantastic. If we could create a platform where we can celebrate things that are typically marginalized, a personal remark, a poem, expressing things that are of little values because it's not quantifiable. Just like children leave traces on the beach, on the sand, or on the wall, anybody can make uh, some drawings, some marks on it. Doesn't matter which language, which 
cultural background you have, we all can make some marks. And I think we should not hesitate to suggest that even in a tiny, tiny mark, there is a mark that matters.